Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, permit me firstly to place on record my support for Budget 24. Whilst doing that, permit me also to congratulate Minister Dr. Ashni Singh and his hardworking team in presenting the largest budget in the history of our country. It is important to note that this, our largest budget, which is a truly remarkable feat, has been presented and is being funded with no new taxes. Mr. Speaker, we've heard much about the budget. And we've heard much discussions about what sensible and responsible expenditures would be. But we must bear in mind that a sensible and a responsible person who has to manage a budget must make decisions. They're decisions of what you can afford. They're decisions of what you need to do first. There are decisions about what you can do to ease the situation. Now, this, Mr. Speaker, is simply a budget being managed, but on a very large scale for our nation. The fundamentals of the budget, Mr. Speaker, are simple. We build out infrastructure badly needed infrastructure. The infrastructure in turn provide housing and provide economic activity, both of which require more skills, more services. We provide for the skills by educating more people as fast as we can. And if you're going to educate people quickly, then you've got to employ every possible way by which you can educate them. You can educate them in person, as we say, at the University of Guyana, or you can educate them online or virtually, which may be faster and may reach persons that would otherwise be unable to attend. Secondly, you need to improve as best you can the payment of monies to people and the citizens. You also have to make their disposable income better. You do that by easing economic hardships. Hardships such as the cost of fuel. Hardships such as VAT on various items. You could reduce that. The cost of shipping is reduced. Now, we'll get to you shortly, Mr. Holder. Now, the budget does these things in spades. The infrastructure being built, the harbor bridge, the highways, the roads, better access. Those roads allow for the development of communities, which Ministers Kroll and Rodriguez are using so that people can access new housing. They have increased salaries, they have increased pensions, they have alleviated the cost of living by holding the cost of fuel constant, increasing the Because You Care crash cash grant, and the removal of some taxes. Mr. Speaker, in a world where everyone wants to be a light, a beacon, Light is recognized as a positive guiding force. My colleagues in the opposition are fighting to be shadows. The total antithesis of light. The members of the opposition speak to this nation as if nothing they have ever done happened. Mr. Mahipal, he speaks as if the Honorable Member, Mr. Mahi Paul, speaks as if the 2020 election never happened. He speaks as if the nation didn't witness daylight robbery being attempted. As the saying goes, 
The Honorable Member Mahi Paul, you can't jump over your own shadow. The disregard for facts, basic, simple facts, is astonishing. The opposition and their membership, the Honorable Members, seem to have a history of that. When the facts don't suit them, they make them up. When the maths don't suit them, they make that up too. The people of Guyana know this. And once again, you can't jump over your own shadow. We heard references by the Honorable Member, Mr. Mahipal. He, he went on about the Public Accounts Committee. He went on about what and how many meetings were had. He made a comparison that in the previous edition of the Parliament, there were not as many meetings. There were not as many meetings because in 2018, the government fell. They refused, they refused to give up power. They then went to an election. They were voted out. And again, they refused for five months to give up power. Here is where Mr. Speaker, the members of the opposition come and stand at the podium and profess their love for transparency, accountability, democracy, all these lofty ideals. When they were in office, they ignored. They ignored the will of the people. They ignored the will of their own membership in parliament. And they still come to this house and say, those are the ideals which bind them. Now, the honorable members in the opposition, they come up one after the other, and I suppose it is fair to assume, it is fair to assume that they will continue to do so speaking of things that are not factually accurate. They use these fantasy facts to make their case, to make their argument. They have the audacity to say on the basis of these fantasy facts that they will win the next election. They forget the Guyanese people know them. The Honorable Member Ms. Minister Indar reminded them that the Guyanese people's mind are not short like goldfish. The factual matrix could not be ignored. This is the party, when it did not suit them, argued vociferously across this land and across the Caribbean that 33 was not a majority of 65. The Honourable Member, Amanza Desir, said in her presentation, Mr. Speaker, there were two choices. And the choices were between the opposition and the government. Mr. Speaker, the actual fact would be, yes, there are two choices. They are choices between democracy and no democracy. The choices are between feasibility studies that yield three-lane bridges, or the other side, this side of the house, building those bridges. We will hear them talk about how many things that we are doing was their idea and they were going to do it, or they're faced with the consequence on this side of the house where we are doing it. You will hear the promises of what they will do and how they will spend the money 
when they get back in power, this side of the house is actually doing actually spending the money for the betterment of the Guyanese people and we are in power. Now, we have choices. Under the previous administration, there were commission of inquiries for everything. I recall there was a commission of inquiry for a phone call. Everything there was a commission of inquiry. <laughs> then we had the spectacle of rigging elections. Then we had fantasy mathematics. Then we had bangles, beds, and bed sheets. Mr. Speaker, brooches. Thank you, honorable member. Mr. Speaker, Ms. Desir was right. There are two choices. We can go back to the choices that involved feasibility studies and rigged elections, or we can actually participate in the development in Guyana. Now, Mr. Speaker, Ms. Desir, the Honorable Member, and others have repeatedly said they can't support the budget. Exactly what in the budget don't you want to support? The Honorable Minister of Sport, Mr. Charles Ramson, was very clear. Which culture, youth, and sport, I stand corrected, which part you don't want? Which road you want us not to build? Which school you want us not to build? Which housing area you want us to cancel? What is it exactly that you want to stop? The Honorable Member, Mr. Sherwin Holder, who, as usual, is not here, he went on to speak about guarantees, about what was in the best interest of Guyana, and why it is that a parent company guarantee could not be issued. Mr. Speaker, permit me through you to offer him some kind words of advice. A, don't speak of things you don't know. B, don't interpret law if you can't read. A necessary qualification to understand and interpret law requires reading. Mr. Speaker. It is only kind of advice. I don't Chief impute. The opposition. Mr. Speaker, stand in order 41-4. The Honorable Member it has insulted the Honorable Member of this House. Which is Honorable Member, you're standing on a point of order. I don't see that. Go ahead, Honorable Member. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, it would help. It would be, it would be, and it has been, my suspicions, Mr. Speaker, is that at the very beginning, the Honorable Member got the judge wrong. It was Justice Kisun, he said Justice Basad. Entirely different. The letters I have compared in the two names, remarkably, they're none in common. Now, <laughs> don't, don't speak if you don't know. Then the second part is, if you're going to refer to the order, at least know what the order said. It would help if he was accurate about that. To then go to say further, that a parent company guarantee should be seen or known. Your Honor, the Environmental Protection Agency is a statutory body which is governed by a statute. What they can disclose that is presented to them is explicitly 
and specifically provided for. They are required for those documents to keep a register, a ledger of all those documents submitted, and it is available for anyone, including the Honorable Member Mr. Sherwin Holder, to go to their office between the hours of biz normal business hours, and he will be allowed to see it. <laughs> well, he will see it. I was careful. Now, much is made, and a lot was, is made by the Honorable Member of the vast need for the guarantee and the dire consequences which will follow. But again, if he would get assistance from someone to read the Environmental Protection Act, he would see that there is a principle enshrined and embedded in it known as the polluter pays principle. It is, in fact, for its time, when the act came about in 96, a very forward-thinking principle. It means simply, without more, without any agreements, the, whoever caused the pollution, whether it's from oil, gas, chicken, duck, cow, whoever causes the pollution is legally obliged to pay for the repair of that pollution. Now, Thank you very much, Honorable Member. I am legally obliged to <laughs> ask someone to ask for an extension. Sir, can the Honorable Member be given five minutes to conclude this presentation? Thank you, A.G. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Member, you have five minutes to conclude. Mr. Speaker, if I may just quickly move to two issues. One is, in the budget as is provided, when we look at what our gas resources are, because much, is, much conversation is had about the non-petroleum sector, and if we look simply at local content, for example, the local content since January 22, 2022 to present, contractors, subcontractors, and licensees reported to the Secretariat number 3,938 local hires. 785 of those were within the first six months of 2023. Of that total, 824 Guyanese were employed as plant and machinery operators, 1,203 professionals, another 485 as technicians. The total number of persons employed now exceed 6,000. I say that to make the point, Mr. Speaker, that when we're saying that we're not taking steps to improve the lives of the average citizen. We are. The Local Content Act by itself has provided the opportunity for locals to be employed. The education system is providing the education they need to be able to be employed. Mr. Speaker, comments that are made about generations and future generations and the use of the natural resources fund it is important to note mr speaker that there is a withdrawal rule from the fund that guarantees that some of the money will remain while others will be used for the benefit of the present population now mr speaker that's always a challenge do you save everything for the generations to come? Or do you also improve the lives of the present generation in addition to providing a safety net for the generations to come? Now, Mr. Speaker, just to tell you that the production, the FPSOs in the Stabrook block are proje projected to realize production of crude oil 
or over 550,000 barrels per day in 2024. This is expected to be ramped up to over 600,000 later in the year. The sector will expand by 44.7% and there is projected that there will be 202 lifts of crude oil at that time. Again, again, Mr. Speaker, the resources of the country are going to be taken from that production, placed into the fund, and before anything happens, this parliament will have a say on what happens. Mr. Speaker, it's a simple, very simple mechanism. But if I may finally say, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member Joretta Fernandes had the vision of taking $2 trillion, which is what she said we had, and divided it by the population, which gave everyone 9.3 million per household. 9.3 million dollars per household. I make no comment on the maths or the figures, they're always suspicious. But the proposition was simply give the money to the people to buy house and cars. Mr. Speaker, what about the roads for those cars? What about the house lots for those houses? What about the water, electricity for the development? What about critical and civil service? The preposterous proposition was made that despite all of the oil, we have squatters and there are poor people in the country. That's a non sequitur, Mr. Speaker. Poor people and squatters and the production of oil are different things. They can be used to alleviate. We must reconcile, Mr. Speaker. We are a poor country moving forward. And forward we will under the leadership of President Dr. Irfan Ali and his cabinet. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Thank Speaker. you, Honourable Member, Ms. Fernandes. 